<laughs> There's this little thing called the on button. <laughs> Listen, be nice to your pastor. <laughs> he can mention you by name in prayer. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. I'm Steve Melody, pastor here, and I welcome all of you to worship today. There are lots of different announcements in the bulletin, uh, so I hope you'll take some time to go through them, to see where you can get active and involved. Take special note that those of you who are waiting for your 2018 giving statements, they're available for you out on the patio. You can pick those up so that we don't have to mail them to you, and we can save all that extra expense. Also notice the special invitation in the bulletin to next Sunday. Um, the wonderful news is... Uh, for those of you who haven't been around, we just completed a three-year capital campaign program called the H2O to Grow, where we did about $600,000 worth of uh, innovations and upgrades and everything around our campus for our ministry and mission. The good news is we're now debt-free. It is amazing. That was our goal, to do all of this $600,000 worth of work in three years and at the end of it be debt-free. And because of your generosity, we accomplished that. We want to celebrate that next Sunday and dedicate what we've done to the service and ministry and mission of God in Jesus Christ. So we invite you to be with us uh, for worship next Sunday and that dedication. It'll be a lot of fun. Let's take a moment now to get ourselves ready for worship, to be in spirit with God and present with God as God is present with us. And so I invite you to take this opening moment just on your own to be in prayer. Let's pray. We come this day, and you'll see around the room lots of different prayer shawls. Some of you are within reach. Um, our invitation to you is to grab on to those prayer shawls somewhere near you, uh, because we're going to do a blessing of these prayer shawls. Who doesn't have one? You got one there? Don't leave a prayer shawl alone. Grab it, take it back with you, whatever. I know. Art's a Nebraska fan, but he got the Michigan colors. Uh, I'm not sure how that happened, but... <laughs> Our prayer shawl team spends lots of time knitting and making and creating prayer shawls. We take time every once in a while in worship to bless them. It is our hope that as fingers have knit them together and put them together and our hands have been placed upon them, that those who wear them feel those prayers and those blessings that have been woven into these, that as they wrap themselves with them, they know the presence of God and their church family. Let's pray again. Gracious God, as we gather in this room to worship, we take a moment to simply ask your blessings upon these prayer shawls. We know there's nothing magical about them, but we do know as people of faith that in the mystery of those who might wear them, they might feel your presence wrapping around them in moments of joy and in moments of challenge. We thank you for the hands that have made these. We thank you for these prayer shawls. And as a congregation, as we send them out into the world, May people know that your presence is with us no matter what, no matter where, and for no matter whom. Lord our God, thank you for being with all of us all the time. Amen. This place of worship is set aside as a place to come together in the name of God. It is our hope that we are open to God this morning. <laughs> So I invite you to be in worship, to give God thanks, to rise and join in singing of God's praise with our opening hymn.
pastures fresh. He makes me feed beside the living stream. He brings my wandering spirit back when I forsake his ways. Leads me for his mercy's sake in paths of truth and grace. When I walk through the shades of death, your presence is my stay. One word of your support. Let us pray. Lord God, you are our shepherd. And in you we have everything we need. You have provided for us a place in which to live and to grow and to be that has trees that bear fruit, ground that bears bushes, animals, everything that we need. You've already thought of you've already created. Thank you. Thank you for allowing us to be a part of the wonder of all that is this planet and this creation. Thank you for being with us in it. For not just sitting back to watch and see what we would do, but by coming to us in this Jesus becoming like one of us, that we might know better who you are and how you call us to live. And yet, God, we still have to say we're sorry. We still ask for your forgiveness. Because we don't always notice. And sometimes we turn away from you. So we come to this time of worship to recenter ourselves in you through Jesus our Christ. Continue to be our shepherd. Please guide us this week. Teach us how to be your faithful people in every moment, in every place, with every one. So that soon, all creation will sing your praise. For you raised Jesus from the dead and proved to us that nothing could separate us from your love in him. And for that we are forever grateful. To you be honor and glory now and forevermore. For we come to you in Jesus' name. 
Amen. grown-ups may be seated while the children come forward, and while they do that with Miss Robin, um, I also need to remind you, please don't take the prayer shawls home with you, okay? If you know of somebody in need, they are celebrating a great joy, or they're having a difficult challenge, then let us know through the church office, and through the church office, we'll get you in touch with the prayer shawl people, and they'll get you a prayer shawl, um, and if you need one, for whatever reason, you just need to be wrapped. Just let us know through the church office and we'll get you a prayer shawl. But after worship, our prayer shawlers will come in and collect them all and get them ready to be distributed when they're in need. Good morning. So do any of you know what this is? No? You've never seen it before? It is the old one. It's called a food pyramid. And it tells you how to eat to be healthy. So the biggest part down here are the grains. That's all the different breads. Can you tell me a bread you like to eat? What kind of bread do you like? You don't, you don't know? Did you like the muffins we made in Sunday school today? Those are pretty good. We, we made muffins today. How about you? Do you guys like any type of breads? Don't know? I like those waffles sitting right there. They have lots of pastas and tortillas. Well, in Sunday school, we're focusing on different things that we know about Jesus and what we call Jesus. And at one point, Jesus, the story we focused on last week and today, was that Jesus said he was the bread of life. Now, we know we need bread to eat it, to be healthy, and it makes our stomachs full, it gives us energy, but it does it stay with us forever. If you eat bread, you don't, you don't have to ever eat again? Or do you get hungry again? You get hungry again? Yeah. So Jesus knew that bread can only last so long in our bodies, and we need, to, we need to eat more. And he also knew that bread, if you leave it out, what happens to it? What, is it, what happens to bread? It gets hard. It gets moldy. So it doesn't last forever. So Jesus wanted something more for us, and he knew he was going to die for our sins. So he told his people, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Now, he knew we needed bread, we need to eat, right, to live, but he also wanted us to be able to live forever in heaven with God, and he knew that through him, we could do that. So if you turn to Jesus and you believe in Jesus, then you can have eternal life in heaven with God. That's pretty, pretty special, huh? Yeah, definitely a special bread. Let's say a prayer. Dear God, thank you for bread that feeds us and gives us energy. Thank you for teaching us to pray as we say, give us our daily bread. And most of all, thank you for Jesus. You sent him here, came to us in Jesus to show us how to live and how to have eternal life with you in heaven. So thank you especially for Jesus being our bread of life. Amen.
Thank you for being such generous people. Through your giving, we have a paved parking lot. Isn't that nice? It is kind of nice not to come in on dirt or rough ground, isn't it? And who would think that a paved parking lot could be ministry and mission, right? But it can be. Just yesterday, we hosted the Market on the Move. For those who don't know, there's a group of folks who will go out to some of the larger uh, organizations that bring fruit and vegetables across the border to our grocery stores to sell, and much of it gets thrown away because it is not absolutely perfect the way we want it, right? They call it grade B uh, produce. may have a little ding, may have a little bruise to it, but it's still perfectly good food that usually gets thrown away into our landfills. And there are groups of people that go and they capture that and bring it to places that host Market on the Move, like our church that does on the fourth Saturday of the month. And folks from the community can come and get that produce at greatly reduced prices. So yesterday we hosted Market on the Move and had a whole bunch of people from the community come in and stretch their food budgets. Parking lots are mission and ministry. They provide space for that to happen. Thank you. Because some of your giving goes to make sure we have paved parking lots. How weird is that, right? But we do. We bless that in our time of offering. So during our time of offering, we invite you to take some time to sign in on those red guest books and to be a part of this offering in whatever ways are right for you. Thank you for letting us be a part of all in creation. 
we seek a blessing on these offerings so that we will know your guidance in their use so that your word will be proclaimed not only here at our church campus but throughout our community throughout our world and into all creation in Jesus name we ask amen you may be seated So the other 167, there are so many ways for us to grow our relationship with God in Jesus the Christ and all those other 167 hours we have in the week beyond the hour of worship. And this is one of them. Behind me is the Casa Maria soup kitchen here in Tucson, Arizona. This is where the sandwiches that we are making today will be coming on Tuesday morning, where every month we help to feed people who are in need. I can help but remember uh, Jesus talking to Simon Peter in John's Gospel, the 21st chapter. And Jesus looks at Simon Peter and he says, do you love me? <laughs> Peter's like, yeah, sure, I got that. Um, I love you. And Jesus says, then feed my sheep. Jesus says to him again, Peter, do you love me? Peter starts to get a little indignant and says, yes, I love you. Take care of my lambs, Jesus said. A third time, Jesus looks at Simon Peter and says, do you love me? And by now, Peter's a little perturbed. He says, you know, I've told you that. I, I love you, Jesus. Jesus looks at him and says, take care of my people. Look, there are lots of ways for you to grow in your relationship with God and Jesus the Christ. Studying, reading books, reading the Bible, through prayer, out in nature, the list is endless. But being the person of Jesus in your life is probably the A number one way for you to grow a relationship with God and Jesus the Christ. And there are so many ways to do that by loving the people that Jesus came to love. Casa Maria Soup Kitchen is one of those ways that you can reach out in the community and love the people of Jesus. It's amazing the need that's out there in the world. And this makes it obvious. Hundreds of people come here every day. Hundreds every day looking for help. Just for food and for company and for a reminder that somehow in this world Jesus is taking care of them. And it's amazing to me in the times when I reach out in my life and do these kinds of things and sneak down here on my own sometimes and go to other helping organizations, how much closer I feel to God when I do this. And somehow, as I serve others, I get out of myself, I get out of my own life and my own needs and my own perceived needs and into the needs of others. And I find myself closer to God and deeper in love with God as I know God is so deeply in love with me. Feed my sheep, tend my lambs, take care of my people. When you do this, you will find your relationship with God and Jesus the Christ growing deeper all the time. By opening your life in that other 167 to the people that Jesus has called us to take care of. But there's one other sort of less obvious way I want to show you. It's all the way across town, so hang on. The other 167. You know, when you get outside yourself and you let the love of God in Jesus the Christ flow through you and you tend to his sheep and take care of his people, you will find your relationship with God growing. 
It's amazing in those moments to feel God working through you uh, and therefore so present with you in all that you do. And a lot of you, I am so humbled, I hear about a lot of you who are out there doing that in lots of different community organizations. But I want you to know it also happens here. Um, it happened to me uh, just recently here at the grocery store. This is not the aisle I wanted to be in that day. This is the aisle with all the vegetables, which are good, but you know. I wanted to be in the aisle over there where they sell the boxes of brownie mix, you know, the Ghirardelli chocolate brownie mix. So as I turned the corner to go up that aisle, the aisle was blocked. Two or three people right at the end of the aisle, I couldn't get through. So frustratingly, I went on and I came up this aisle and it was empty except for one person. And as I passed by her, I saw her kind of sheepishly looking up at the racks and the top of the shelves. She was in one of the scooter chairs that you can use at the grocery store. She couldn't reach the top. And I just quickly said, can I help you? And she said, yeah, I need that can. So I got it, handed it to her, and walked on. It was, it was no big deal for me. But I realized after I left her, why the brownie aisle was blocked. Because God needed me to be here in the vegetable aisle with a person who needed a little extra help. And it was really no big deal for me to do that. But I think it was a big deal for her. And it was a moment that became a really big deal for me. Because I realized in just a fraction of a moment, God can work through us to take care of his people. And just reaching a can for somebody else brought me closer to God in all that I do. The other 167, find them, live them, be them, feed my sheep, tend my sheep, take care of my people. And that other 167, you will grow your relationship with God in Jesus the Christ, closer and closer all the time. We all have them. After you leave worship today, you'll have 167 and probably an extra 15 minutes because we're ahead of schedule even in worship today to grow in your relationship with God and Jesus Christ. Take those moments and recognize God's presence everywhere in everyone. And let that recognition be a way of you seeing God in you and around you. And when you, become to real, when you come to realize that, you will come to realize that your relationship with God is already growing just by being with God and being aware of God's presence. As we come to a time of prayer, there are three folks especially and their families that I'd like us to keep in prayer. We are giving thanks today. Rylan Cook got to go home. Uh, for those who don't know, Rylan is our little three-year-old in our congregation who was born with heart and lung issues. Uh, and about a week and a half ago, caught a cold that quickly turned into pneumonia. And for uh, Rylan, any sort of cold is bad enough, let alone catching pneumonia. And he had a really, really rough week in the hospital. And he was able to go home yesterday. Um, and that's such good news for his mom and dad and for all of us and for Rylan, who's happier to be at home. But then two of our members passed away on Friday. In a way, they got to go home too, right? So we pray for the family of Hayden Richards. Uh, Hayden was in his mid to upper 90s, lived a long, wonderfully long and faithful life. He's a Navy veteran uh, out of England uh, prior to coming here to the United States where uh, they became citizens and he served in the Navy and loved this church uh, and loved God and trusted in God. And so his family will gather later this week for a memorial for Hayden. 
but also our beloved Cher Perrin passed away. Cher most often attended the 8.30 service, and particularly over the last year has been struggling with her health and working with hospice care uh, in her guidance. But wow, I'll tell you, every time Cher could get to worship, she was there. Every time Cher could get to the women's Bible study on the first Friday of the month, Cher was there. Uh, she absolutely loved God and wanted everybody around her to know it and to know God. She passed away on Friday, very peacefully at home. Uh, we are still working with her son, Jason, uh, to figure out a time to gather as a, a church family to celebrate her life. And we'll let you know more about that as that time arrives. Let's join together in prayer. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for being with us in, in wondrous, joyful moments of our lives and for being with us in those difficult, challenging moments. We really are so grateful that Rylan is back home and doing better. We lift to you that little kid who doesn't ever seem to give up. In his short three years of life, he's taught us how to just trust and be and move forward. But we're asking for a good healing for him. The kind we read about in the Bible. So that he can grow up and praise your name and teach others to do the same. And today we thank you for Hayden and we thank you for Cher. Who grew older in their lives and deeper in their faith and did just what we hope Ryland will do. They praised and honored you and taught us to do the same. Thank you, God, for holding all of us in the palm of your hand. Help us to notice. And Lord, here in this quiet moment, hear the names of the people that we raise to you, even if they're our own names who need to know that you are wrapping around them in their lives today. Lord, thank you for the Casa Maria Soup Kitchen. For those who started it and those who run it now. For those who will welcome the sandwiches that we've already made this morning, that will be delivered on Tuesday, may they, in the eating of those sandwiches, feel your presence broken open for them. And may they know through this church your continued care for them. And Lord, thank you for strangers at the grocery store. For the moments that you offer us to simply be like you, the hand, the heart of Jesus, who simply does a small act. that allows your greatness to flow. Lord, here we are. Use us to show you. And through the help of your Spirit, help it not go to our heads, but to our hearts and souls so that we'll continue to serve in your name, not ours. And 
And Lord, we pray for all the leaders of our government. Speak loudly to what feels like deaf ears. And show us a way through. Lord, your blessings are far too many to count. But we sure are grateful to be together today. Continue to move in our lives in those other 167 hours in the week that, that we will know you're with us and that others will know you're with them. And today we recommit ourselves to following Jesus as he leads us to you. And we pray together the prayer he gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Let's rise and proclaim whose world this really is. This is my father's world, but let me ne'er forget that though the wrong seems oft so strong, God is the ruler yet. You know, the reality is a lot of people see this world gone completely awry. And a lot of people who are not people of faith think that it's an awful place to be. Show them wrong. Show them that God is still the ruler yet. And that God will win in the end. And every end will be a beginning with God. You do that through your other 167 and how you live them. And how you grow your relationship with God in Jesus the Christ. Because the reality is, you and I know that when the world went really wrong, on that third day, God raised Jesus from the dead and gave us all life forever. May that grace be made known in all our 168, not just this one, but in the other 167. Shine that peace. Share it with one another before you leave the sanctuary and share it with everyone you meet till we meet again. Live in peace. Amen.